Hey, VC here. I want to tell you the story about my first attempt at the Dirty Kanza. What is Dirty Kanza? It's an insane event where you ride 200 miles, about 190 miles, on some serious gravel. I've done some stuff in the past, some gravel rides, mostly just dirt roads, to be honest. Uh, this is like proper gravel, dude. Anyway, I want to tell you about this story, my experience, and kind of maybe what you could expect on your first time out at Dirty Kanza. Let's get into it. And I have three cameras, right? Like two GoPros and my little selfie stick, like filming it. It was really cool. And then I felt like a total turd taco. There are some stories you just rather not tell, or parts of the story, you just rather not tell. A bit of that here, there's gonna be a part of the story where it's just it, one ginormous vegan excuse. But it is what it is. I, I really like battled with how to tell the story because of, uh, of just how poorly I did during this event and how to explain why that happened. So we'll just get into that later, I guess. Uh, whatever, let's, um, let's just start with getting to Dirty Kanza. I actually was gonna fly out Wednesday, get there like Wednesday at 11 o'clock at night, and then drive from Kansas City, the, the two or three hour drive to Emporia, Kansas, where I was staying, kind of a marketing company that deals also with IRC tires, and so that's, the whole reason I'm coming out here is IRC Tires is is who is providing this trip for me. So I'm actually gonna stay in a house with them. And I'm not gonna dwell on this too much, but so basically get on a plane. The plane is delayed, which means then I miss my connecting flight. I actually run, because the flight hadn't left. The plane's still on the ground, but they're like, we close the doors, you're smoked. Come on, no, 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 please. Please let me on. So then I had to wait in this long line and try to figure out a different way to get to Kansas City. A lot of the options were like 24 hours from now, there's another flight, but they're not gonna provide a hotel, so you're just like sleeping in the airport for 24 hours. That wasn't cool. So then I found this other option that I could fly out at like midnight, and it like jumped me back to like Las Vegas and then like Chicago and then Kansas City. It was totally crazy. That flight also got delayed. Neat. Bro, by the time I landed in Kansas City, it was like three in the afternoon and I hadn't slept at all, right? It's just been like this crazy 24 hour planes, trains, and automobiles type thing. But we have the bike, we have our gear, and we're headed to Emporia, Kansas. Okay, Google, give me directions to Emporia, Kansas City. <music> We are traveling to this house. He gives me this description of the house. He's like, there's this house, there's a, a barn attached, it's a dirt road with puddles, and it's right by the freeway. So, and then he sends me a screenshot of the map. So I'm like, okay, I, I think I can figure it out, because I don't have the actual address. So I'm driving, and I see a long dirt road to a house with an attached barn, which every house in this area is this exact description. So I drive down this dirt road, and there's trucks out, and I park, and I am literally about to walk into this house because my IRC guy said the 
we're not there, but just walk in the back door. Just come in and set up your stuff. So then this dude on this tractor rolls up and bro, if he hadn't been outside. So he rolls up and I'm like, hey man, is this where the IRC guys are? He's like, no. Uh, is this where the IRC guys are? Nope. IRC. Like bike guys? There's the bike guys aren't renting this house. Nope. So I just rolled up to some random dude's house. We don't go outside. Good thing you were out here. I was about to walk in the back door. They were like, "Yeah, this is like they, they explained this exact setup," and they're like, "Just walk in the back door. It's open." So that'd have been super embarrassing. Yeah. Sorry, dude. You're good. See you, man. Uh, but if he had not pulled up, dude, I was literally going to walk into some random stranger's house in the back door and just be like, what up? I'm here. Dude, I almost got my head blown off. But so he was really nice and he was like, no, you, you know, you don't belong here. So then I drive out and like the next door neighbor is, it, it's like the exact same house. Uh, and so then I go down the dirt road and I find it and I'm there. I get settled in. Boom. We have a place to stay. So then I go into the barn, which is like, they have it totally dialed for bike setup. It's really nice. They have a kind of a bike stand and tools. And I'm running a felt breed with the Princeton carbon rims and the IRC Bonkin Boken tires. And, uh, and yeah, dude, I'm super stoked with the setup. I haven't had a lot of time on it. So I really wanted to get out there. So I do, I get it dialed, I head over to the expo where they have like booths and all the stuff going on. Then uh, I, I see Jeremiah Bishop, who I don't know if you remember from the Vermont race, but he was there. And so I was like, dude, what's up? Uh, and he was ready to go for a ride. I was also ready to go for a ride. And we went on a t-shirt ride to explore the surrounding area and sort of get a sense of what we were running. <music> And dude, Jeremiah was like running a full on road bike, which is crazy. But it got me a good sense of like the terrain, like what are we actually riding here? And I felt very confident in my setup at that point because of how deep the gravel is. It's very, very deep. And then we went to dinner. Dude, IRC like bought this Mexican restaurant. IRC had all this stuff all over the place. And we had some amazing uh, Mexican food. I got like veggie fajitas. Dinner was amazing. So now we're gonna take a little night ride back to the house. Warm, I'm just in a t-shirt and shorts. We're just going for a little peaceful night ride, dude. You wanna see something funny? There's a video store right here. Who in their right mind would go to a physical place to rent a physical unit to put in a physical machine to watch a movie? Come on, bro. Come on, what are you doing? So Friday comes and we, we actually do this like industry ride or whatever with um, a couple people, uh, a good little group. And then once that was done, we actually then went with the bigger group ride. It was a huge group ride, super big. Sort of just getting to find out like who's here, which is so nuts to see guys from California doing this race. You're just like, whoa, you know what I mean? Like I didn't know you were gonna be here. So it's really cool to see so many people from all over the place. This guy lives here. Hey, what's up? <laughs> so what do you think about all these people just like all of a sudden pouring into your town and, and... Honestly, it's it's so much fun because like I started riding bikes out here on this road out and back on before I even got a gravel bike. And just like riding the exact same thing that I rode like five miles on with like, like team pros is... It's just badass. <laughs> Dude, and what's so nuts is so many people I talked to said, one, I've never done 200 miles before and this is like my first gravel experience but they're gonna just send it. And it's so crazy that when you some ask someone and they're like, oh, I'm not doing the 200, I'm just doing the 100. Bro, 100 miles is insanity on gravel. But only here in Dirty Kansas is for some reason 100 miles like 
oh, that's just, oh, good little boy, you're just gonna do the little one. That's a lot of riding. And then there's even a bigger one. There's the Dirty Kansas XL, which is 350 miles, which is just insane. I'm doing the 200. A lot of other people are doing the 200. So then we get set up with, um, we go into like the place where you sign up. Tell me, out of this is your fifth time. Fifth time. Like what is, what's the tip? The what's tip? the pro tip? Make sure to smile a lot. You're gonna go through a dark, you go through some dark patches by around mile 120. You just have to know that you're gonna punch through that and it's gonna get better. But so then, let's kind of talk about what the game plan is for the race. I feel great. I feel very confident in my fitness. I feel very confident in my fueling strategy. My whole program is dialed. I've tested this program uh, on several very big rides, right? Uh, climbed to Kaiser, which was eight hours and 42 minutes. Same program of like fueling strategy and training. The Vermont and, and Belgian waffle, which Belgian waffle like I did super good at. All I'm worried about is like a flat or mechanical because I feel friggin so my plan is to stay with the front group at all costs at all costs like we're just going for glory dude glory i want to be up there banging bars with taylor finney and lachlan morton and i want this shot of me and an ef education dude off the front that's what i want bro so i'm just like dude let's do this let's like not even look at power I am just going to empty my soul to make this front group. That was the plan. And then once I make the front group, we'll go from there. in store for me feel good though feel good what's your game plan definitely sit in for like the first 140 miles and then uh <laughs> then attack then yeah <laughs> see what happens i think it's gonna be super interesting how the world tour guys kind of shake it out like if they like start forcing early breaks and stuff because then you might just be like you know screw it how, how important do you think it is to get on that front train i think just staying in that front group is going to be important but not in like the breakaway i think you'll you'll kill yourself if you do that the vibe at the start do just mm, so good so vibing feeling so good just like want to hug everyone like yeah dude we're about to embark on something epic all of these all of these things have been going around about the course being super muddy and some of the and there's, there's gonna be rain and everyone's saying like if it rains you're gonna have to walk your bike like 10 miles like there's just all this craziness going around so everyone's kind of nervous and then they start calling people up and the call-ups dude are just world tour world tour world tour world gravel champion like you know northern ireland champion just like champion 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 Team joining us from australia Lachlan morton the line from Boulder, Colorado. Welcome Taylor Finney. Go. Start. We're off. And I am gonna just battle as hard as I can to stay as far up the front as possible.
bro, I am ugh, gonna make this front group and I'm gonna battle for the front. That's just, that's just what's gonna happen, dude. I, I have no, I'm not even worried about how I'm gonna finish. I just need to start well before I can even think about finishing well. I'm not looking at my power meter, I'm not looking at anything. All I'm doing is how can I get to the front of this race, which everyone's sort of doing. And then I find myself on Lachlan Morton's wheel and he's attacking. And I am just like, yes, dude. And I got my 360 camera. I've got all the cameras. I've got a GoPro front and rear and a 360 camera. And I'm following an attack by Lachlan Morton. And obviously this is the dumbest thing I could ever do uh, because what if we got away? I'm gonna blow into shreds, but it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, bro. This is, this is what I wanted was to be up there with like these greats. And I was, I was there. We got brought back really quickly, but it still doesn't matter. I was off the front with Lachlan Morton for a bit. <laughs> I'm crushing it, I'm crushing it. Dude, I'm doing so good. Dudes are crashing. I like missed every crash because I have to start and stop the GoPro, right? <clears throat> a bunch of people are crashing, a bunch of people are getting flats and I'm just avoiding all this. Uh, we get to a super technical section, like, dude, this gravel, some of this was like, uh, trucks had gone through, so there's like only one line, the, and, and dudes are just flying, and it's so difficult because you can't really choose your line because you're on someone's wheel, so then what will happen is they're going, and then all of a sudden they hop out of a line, and you're just like in a ditch, you're like, ah, and so I was, uh, I was a little hesitant, man, but still, really full gassing it and during one of the most technical parts of the, the the race it had broken apart quite a bit and i'm just so i'm so bummed because i can see the front group like we we kind of get out of this technical section and there's a front group of maybe 30 and i'm not in it but blake anton was not in it as well and so me and him sort of got to the front and was just like more him than me uh, I'm like in his draft uh, and we're just flying dude trying to catch and everyone's on our wheels but guys are like being smart about this and not blowing themselves up so we didn't really have a whole lot of people trying to help with this chase but to again I am I don't know what I'm power wise I'm doing but I am full gas trying to get back onto the group full gas full gas full gas Come on, Tyler, go Tyler. And then I do, I make it back onto the group and maybe the group's like 30 strong out of how many people started the race, a billion. And now it's just like the group, like, okay, we're gonna probably just roll until the first rest stop, which it comes at like 65 miles. So I'm so stoked, dude. And I've been on top of my hydration Bro, I drank three coconut waters uh, the night before. Uh, I was very hydrated going into the race, and then I had three bottles on me, uh, all with beta fuel. I had a bunch of gels. Like my my fueling strategy, dude, should have worked. It should have been good. But right about 50 miles, I've made the front group. Here comes a vegan excuse. Dude, all of a sudden I'm like, I'm feeling as if I've had eaten nothing, that I've drank nothing, that nothing is being absorbed into my body. My stomach is like really distended and very sloshy. Nothing is being absorbed. And I'm just like, dude, this sucks, man. Very quickly, within about a five mile period, I went from feeling great, holding lots of watts, to I could barely turn the pedals over. Ugh. So then I fall out of the front group. Another group comes with like a Trek dude on, you know, like a pro world tour guy, but like a bunch of guys that didn't make the front group, like high level dudes didn't make the front group. 
they catch me and I literally could do 75 watts. 75 watts, that's about my maximum watts that I can do. And I'm just thinking, what is happening? Why? Why is this happening? Oh, holy hell, dude. I was really trying to hold on to the first aid station. I made it 50 miles with the front group. Fuck, dude. These guys are just motoring. I still have 149 miles left to ride. Good golly. And so I'm thinking all I need to do, I guess, is get to the next rest stop and then I've got my camel pack that's full of beta fuel, tons of calories. You know, maybe I just went really, really hard in this first 50 miles and so then I burned through all those calories, but it was just so strange how my, what my body was doing. Right away. Do you want any plain water? Uh, anything else? Nope, I think I'm good. Okay, Smile. man. Yeah. All right. Go get it. So then I roll into the rest stop and like NASCAR pit stop it, boom, 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 we're gone. And I get my camel pack on and I'm trying to drink from my camel pack, but I'm full. This is what's so weird. I'm literally, water is like here. Like I'm trying to drink and I'm just bleh. I drip bleh. And nothing would, I, I was full to the brim of fluid. Nothing was being passed down. So then I couldn't really drink from my camel pack. And so I'm like, dude, what is happening? This is where uh, I embark upon one of the hardest mental challenges I've ever embarked on. I guess the silver lining of this, I don't know how this has changed my perspective on how deep someone can go. Because it's one thing if you have the watts and you have the fitness and everything's working well, but when nothing is working well on your body, like it's all mental. I can't not finish. That's not even an option. I hate telling this part of the story. 80 miles in and I, I have nothing, dude. My soul is gone from my body. And I was so far forward that so many people keep catching me and being like, what's up, dude? Hop on. And I'm just like, I have nothing. I have nothing. I can barely pedal the bike. So then I'm just being passed and passed and passed and passed and passed forever. But dude, I just mentally went somewhere where it's like, all you have to do is just keep pedaling. This will eventually be over. Just pedal the bike. No matter how hard you're pedaling, I just keep pedaling the bike. I mean, dude, we're pretty much done, and we only have 100 miles left. Thank you, sir. Yeah, of course, no problem. Excuse me, sir. You wouldn't happen to have, like, a Coca-Cola that you would want to donate to a crack cyclist. You good? I'm good. All right, uh, party on. Yep. <laughs> party on, me. So I'm just gonna sit here for a minute because anything I say is just so dumb, right? It's just so dumb. I'm sort of coming back to life, dude. Getting some water in me and kind of just starting to enjoy the ride, but it's so insane that we have 101 miles. Like, holy balls. 50 miles to the next rest stop. I don't know, I'm kind of starting to just accept that I'm gonna enjoy this ride versus doing really well. But uh, whatever, man. Let's have fun. It's beautiful out here. So anyway, so I'm just like, okay, all I gotta do is just pedal my bike. If you just keep pedaling your bike, no matter how hard you're pedaling, you, you will be moving through space and in, in an amount of time, you will be done. So this is by far the hardest mental 
challenge I've ever had to face is to essentially ride 150 miles with like the flu or something. And I did, dude, I just kept riding and kept riding and kept riding very slow. Everyone was passing me. Uh, there was like a fat bike, like two dudes on fat bikes, huge tires, and they just roll past me. There's nothing I can do. It's not even a matter of, oh, just jump on their wheel. Nah, I ain't gonna happen. I have 75 watts to my name. I keep seeing Taylor Finney on the side of the road, uh, broken down, changing flats. And so I was thinking, well, you know, it'd be really cool if I stopped and helped him. Maybe he needs a CO2, I have a bunch of them, and then we will just be best friends forever. And we'll ride, and we'll just be the greatest friends that have ever been. When you are the best of friends, sharing all that you discover. One, two, three. Velociraptor. What? Did we just become best friends? Yep. So I stop and pull over. Hey, what's up, dude? He didn't. He didn't need my help. But actually, at a certain point, we did end up riding together for a little bit. And I asked him how he deals with pressure, like coming to this event. Everyone's thinking, dude, Taylor Finney's gonna ride off the front, no problem. He should win this hands down. But he's riding with me, way off the back. Obviously, he had mechanicals. But like, how does he deal with that pressure? For one, he thought I was talking about tire pressure. So then. It was a very awkward conversation because I'm like, what are you talking about? And he's like, why are you talking about tire pressure? And I'm just like, what are you talking about tire pressure? I'm asking you about mental pressure. <laughs> so it's like just a really awkward conversation for a little bit. But then he was like, oh, I, okay, I get what you're saying. You're talking about pressure, pressure, not tire pressure. I'm like, yeah. He said, like, you have two choices. You have two choices to like uh, listen to that or not listen to that. But all you can do is ride your bike. I don't know, man. That was, I needed that in that moment. I needed him to just say, this guy who's so good, and he's like my spirit animal, uh, just to tell me like, dude, it doesn't matter. Just ride your bike. That's all you can do, so just do that. So I do that. I keep riding. second wind but I'm not like contemplating quitting like we know we I know I'm making but boy there was a there was a time there so I'm just kind of just kind of enjoying it right now dude just just riding the race is definitely over for me but I guess you could still race the sun <laughs> I don't know, man, it's so freaking pretty out here. So it's kind of like, I tried, dude. I tried to stay with the front group. I really tried to have a killer result. Now it's just about riding. The felt bike company, they're the ones that are like sagging me. So I roll in and they're like excited, like, oh, let's, let's get you going. And I'm like, dude, I gotta lay down for a very long time. So then I lay down in the van um, again, just bringing any sort of nutrients into me is just not possible, which is frustrating. So I lay there for what feels like an eternity, and I'm just thinking, dude, I, ca I just gotta keep riding. So then I get on the bike and I start riding, and the last like 50 miles are the easiest miles, okay? It's like the easiest bit of, of all of it. It's mostly flat. So at least there's that, and uh, I kind of just, dude, just pedal on my bike, just pedal my bike, pedal my bike, pedal my bike, just constantly getting passed by people. So I just, anyone who ever knew of me or heard of me, it's like, this guy's the worst. Uh, he must edit his videos so well to make him look like he's doing good, because I just passed him and he was laying on the side of the road. <laughs> I don't even know how to use a camera. I've been lying to myself that if I got into the 20s, I could quit. I just get to like break 30 miles, get to 29 miles, then you can quit. And now I'm gonna lie to myself about getting into the teens, get to 19 miles.
I am absolutely pear-shaped, bro. I had two guys come up towards pretty much the end. The sun's going down and they're like, hey, we gotta make it before the sun goes down because if you do, you get like a special patch. It's a special accomplishment. Okay, cool. I have nothing inside. But for whatever reason, like they motivated me just to like stay on their wheel a little bit and they actually towed me in. They dragged my ass into the finish. The finish, even though I am six hours behind the winner, something ridiculous like that it's just lined with people dude and everyone's cheering and trying to slap your hand music is like it's just such a warm welcome <laughs> Congratulations, you're a race the sun winner. Thank you. Good job. But the finish, the finish area just, dude, revives you. Makes you feel amazing, no matter how you finish. Tell me about it. Oh man, it was, uh, the heat was brutal. Uh, it was the hardest thing today. What was the hardest part? Uh, I need more climbing than I thought. Yeah, that kind of beat you up over the course of the day. I literally cannot believe that I made it 150 miles with how I felt. Just the worst I've ever felt on a bike ever in my entire life. Just not even on a bike. The worst I've ever felt, period. So I can't believe that my mind was able to push me to the finish. So then I go into like the IRC little pop-up tent, collapse on the ground, I'm dead. And uh, I, all I wanna do, dude, is just get home and go to sleep. I've been thinking about swan diving into bed pretty much for 150 miles. Velo worthy, uh, Brian, he actually loads me up and he takes me back to the house. I go and I get in bed, but I gotta take a freaking shower and shit because I'm super disgusting. So like, not really. I really just wanted to crawl on bed and almost pretend like this never happened. Look, the event was so phenomenal. I had no, at no point did I think I'll never do this again. This is so kind of stupid for me to say for how bad I did. It's not that hard, right? It's really not that difficult. If you just keep pedaling your bike, you know what I mean? A ton of guys had so many mechanicals or issues. So that's kind of, you know, if you have a bunch of mechanicals or issues that sort of takes the steam out of your sails. But for the most part, bro, almost anyone can finish this event. It's just about continuing to pedal that bike. And I think that if there's anything that you can pull out of this video to show that, is that for 150 miles, dude, I had oh nothing. And so if I could go 150 miles pushing 75 watts, dude, you could do that, right? It's not, it's not that bad. It is, it is a true test because it tests everything. It tests, tests your mechanical skills, right? It tests your fueling strategy, tests your fitness, and it really tests your mental attitude. At, so at what point are you willing to just call it? And when you don't call it and you make it to the finish, dude, you're stuck. You're st and it changes your life, man. It changes how you're going to look at all other things because that was a really hard day for me. And I can't wait to come back next year, but we got to embrace these, these moments. And I think that again, the mental fortitude in which you don't think you can finish, but you do, that's important. Huge thank you to IRC Tires, who allowed me to stay in the house, got me dialed felt bikes, who got me with the SAG support and the bike, uh, Princeton Carbon Wheels, get me dialed on their wheels. Again, dude, everything about my program was perfect except for me. So at least there's that that I am the failure, not anything else around me. So there you go. Hope you enjoy, as always, Vegan Cyclist. Yeah. Almost heaven, West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountain, Shenandoah River. Life is older, older than the trees.
trees, younger than 